Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the very latest release from the CMU emulator team, their latest version 1.18.2. Now as usual, this releases for its Patreon supporters one week early and since it released for them last Friday, this of course means that it's going to be released to everyone in the public for free this coming Friday, May the 1st. This update brings with it a sick update to the Vulkan API that I think all of you are going to be very, very happy with. We're going to be taking a look at that improvement in just a few minutes, but for now, let's take a look at all of the other changes coming in this 18.2 release version. Okay, so as usual, we're going to start at the top of their changelog, where they have given us a really cool update to the way graphics packs are handled in the emulator. When updating your packs in the future, you are now going to get a prompt if any of the graphics packs you yourself have in use have changed, be it in name or function. The emulator will now also let you know if any graphics packs you were previously using have been removed. They've also improved the robustness of the account.dat parser. This file is mainly used for online play or online multiplayer. Previously, this file could become corrupt or unreadable. This issue is now thankfully fixed. Moving on, we've seen some changes to how amiibo files are handled in the emulator and with the implementation of get npf register info, get error code and get tag info, games that expect amiibos with a registered owner will no longer display an empty EULA error message box. We have also seen some changes to how input is handled mainly with the new DSU controller client. Thankfully, they have fixed a bug in this DSU client controller where when making a new mapping and saving your settings, the port and IP of that controller would just be forgotten on next boot. Okay, so onto the good stuff, all the changes coming to Vulkan. Thanks to correctly emulated depth clamping, they have fixed the overly bright backgrounds in some stages of Super Smash Bros for Wii U. For every game on the emulator, they have also added a new UI overlay notification for when Vulkan graphics pipelines are compiled. Now, if you thought Vulkan was fast at compiling and building shaders before, you literally haven't seen anything. In this new 118.2 update, they have significantly improved the speed at which shaders can be compiled when playing your games. To demonstrate this, I've put together this little test using The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Great Plateau. On the left, you can see the old system of caching shaders, and on the right, you can see this brand new experimental SPIRV optimization pass. This optimization can be enabled from the debug tab within the emulator. Now, it's a little bit complicated as to exactly how this works, so I'm just going to read out exactly what the developers have said to us. They have added an experimental SPIRV optimization pass, which is applied to all shaders that are compiled during the shader loading screen. This should significantly reduce pipeline compilation stutter if a shader cache is present. It may also reduce GPU load slightly. The downside of this shader loading is that the loading screen for your shader cache is going to be slightly slower than before, but the developers are planning to address this speed issue in a future CMU update. By default, this option is set to disabled. It can be enabled, as I said, under the debug experimental tab. Now, many of you may not be aware of this, but every time you update your GPU driver, or sometimes when you update CMU emulator, your pipeline cache is going to be deleted, forcing you to rebuild it anyway. This new system is going to significantly decrease the amount of stutter you get when you're rebuilding this pipeline shader cache with the Vulkan API. As I also said, for both of these demonstrations, I didn't have any pipeline cache. The frame drops we got from building any of these new pipeline shaders on this new system are so minimal, it's almost completely unnoticeable. In my opinion, this is an unreal update to the emulator, and I'm sure many people who prefer to use a Vulkan for the added performance, like AMD and Intel GPU users, even us Nvidia users are going to be very, very happy with this new update. In regards to Nvidia GPU users and Vulkan, if you've been playing Breath of the Wild in the last while on some of the latest Nvidia drivers, you may have noticed that your skybox is a bit broken, just like you can see in the gameplay now. 
This is an issue with any NVIDIA GPU driver that is past 445.87. So if you don't want your game to have a broken skybox and to look more like this on Vulkan, please make sure to use a driver that is before this number. I will leave an NVIDIA driver download page link in the description of this video. So if you wish to have your game look like this instead of having a broken skybox, please just download and install any NVIDIA driver before 445.87. As I said, this new CMU version is going to be releasing on this coming Friday, the 1st of May. And again, since we've gotten even more settings for the best possible stability and performance, I will be releasing my updated CMU performance guide once that new version gets released to everyone in public. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any issues, as always, you'll find a link to my Discord down below. And if you have any questions you'd like to ask me about this video, don't be afraid to ask me in a comment down below. I do go through them and I do read most of the comments on all of my videos. So if there's anything you do want to ask, please just ask me down there. Once again, guys, thank you all very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.